Despite ongoing COVID woes and their military aggression toward Taiwan, Communist China is set to host the Winter Olympics on February 4th. They also continue to persecute Christians and religious minorities within their own borders. The United States and other nations will compete under what they call a diplomatic boycott. But what does that really mean? With perspective on all of this is the president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers, Reggie Littlejohn, and the president of the Population Research Institute and author of Bully of Asia, Stephen Mosier. Thank you both for being here. Uh, first, Steve, with China's open aggression towards Taiwan this past weekend, I mean, they sent 39 warplanes into Taiwan's airspace uh, on Sunday. President Xi has continuously made it clear that the Chinese Communist Party views Taiwan as part of its territory. What is the purpose of these incursions? And do you think they're timed with the Russian actions occurring in and around Ukraine? Well, it would be surprising if they weren't timed, uh, if, if Xi and Putin weren't talking about what to do in terms of joint action to, to force the United States to deal with two crises at once. The, the ongoing incursions are clearly intended to demoralize the population of Taiwan and to show them that over the long run that they can't possibly stand up to giant communist China. I think that's false, by the way. I think uh, opinion polls in Taiwan show that uh, three quarters of the population says it would take up arms and fight if China actually launched an invasion of the island. The people in Taiwan enjoy human rights. They enjoy freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of association. Uh, they do not want to be uh, subjected to the same, uh, you know, co corruption and oppression that we now see in Hong Kong, uh, just a couple of hundred mm. miles away from Taiwan. Yeah. The U.S. and Japanese navies put on a show of force in the Philippine Sea. Does China get the message, Steve? And, and what do you expect to see vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan? Well, you know, Stalin said uh, uh, decades ago that 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 he likes to probe uh, his enemies and see if the uh, they meet mush or steel. And if they meet mush, they continue to probe, they continue to advance. And if they meet steel, then they retreat. Well, we've got now two aircraft carriers uh, doing maneuvers, uh, carrier battle groups in the South China Sea. That's several hundred thousand tons of steel uh, armed with uh, several, um, you know, hundred planes that are very effective warfighting weapons. So I think that's a great deterrent right there. It's a signal to Xi uh, to keep his hands off Taiwan and, in fact, to retreat from his claims uh, to seize the South China Sea. I don't think anything is going to happen until after the Olympics because they wouldn't want to upset mm. the apple cart, as it were. They want a great celebration uh, uh, showing China's success in, in athletic endeavors before perhaps trying to show their success in military endeavors. I want to play something for you. This is Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman at a virtual think tank event on Wednesday regarding Putin's timing over a possible invasion of Ukraine. Listen. We certainly see uh, every indication uh, that he is going to use military force uh, sometime, uh, perhaps now and uh, middle of February. Uh, we all are aware that the Beijing Olympics begin on February 4th, the opening ceremony, and uh, President Putin expects to be there. I, I think that probably uh, uh, President Xi Jinping would not be ecstatic if uh, Putin chose that moment to invade Ukraine. Uh, so that may affect his timing and his thinking. Stephen, what do you make of Sherman's comments? And remember, Russia invaded Georgia in 2008 during the Summer Olympics that took place in Beijing. In, in Beijing, yeah. Uh, the world would be distracted, certainly, by the Olympic uh, Winter Olympics in Beijing. And, but, but also, there's a timetable here uh, with regard to the invasion of both Taiwan and the Ukraine. Uh, when the weather starts to warm and the snow starts to melt, you know, those T-72 Soviet tanks aren't very much good on boggy, muddy ground. So they've only got a few more weeks to move if they're going to move. Mm. Uh, in the mm. case of Taiwan, you have to have calm weather on the Taiwan Straits to get an invading army across. Otherwise, it will be sunk in the Taiwan Straits and slaughtered on the beaches. And, and my view of both, uh, Raymond, is that we should arm the Ukrainians and the people of Taiwan. And, and if we arm them, they will fight for their freedom. There's no need to shed American blood.
Hmm, interesting. Uh, I want to move on to these Beijing Olympic Games. Uh, I want to bring Reggie Littlejohn in. Reggie, uh, you've been very outspoken that the U.S. should have boycotted these games because of China's human rights record. Is this diplomatic boycott enough? And does that have any impact at all? Well, Raymond, the, the, we, we have called these the genocide games. China's human rights atrocities are horrific, including forced abortion, forced sterilization, infanticide, uh, interning Uyghur Muslims, all of this aimed at destroying the Uyghur people. And a diplomatic boycott is absolutely not enough. And I testified before the U.S. Congress last May that we should be, and Chris Smith with me, that we should be moving the games. Now it's too late to move the games. And we should. And so what I would say is I, I worry about the Olympic athletes even going to Beijing. They're having a COVID outbreak mm. there. They're going to be under mass surveillance. Um, and I don't know whether any of them are thinking that they will say something about the uh, human rights atrocities from Chinese soil, but if they do, I think that they would be endangering themselves. So the whole thing is just a mess, and we at the genocidegames.org, that's a website that I have co-authored, co um, are calling mm -hmm. on uh, the U.S. Olympics Committee to encourage U.S. athletes not to attend for their own safety. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Dur during an interview on CNN this past Sunday, broadcaster Bob Costas, who's anchored many of these Olympic Games, said this about the International Olympic Committee awarding the Games to China. Listen. The IOC deserves all of the disdain and disgust that comes their way for going back to China yet again. They were in Beijing in 2008. They go to Sochi in 2014. They're shameless about this stuff. The IOC awarded the games to China in 2015, and since then, we have seen the genocide of the Uyghur Muslims, repression in Hong Kong, stricter restrictions on religious freedom, repression in Th Tibet, increased aggression toward Taiwan. Reggie, why did the IOC look past the ongoing repression and abuses in the country, in the mainland, and allow the Chinese this moment of honor and, and moment on the world stage? I would agree that this is completely disgraceful, and it was predictable, because after the, the 2008 games, China, Chinese human rights deteriorated, So what made, and that was after China promised to improve their human rights. Mm -hmm. So what made them think that they were going to improve this time? You know, Raymond, this is very much like the 1936 games in Berlin, the Nazi Olympics. Uh, except it's even worse, because in 1936, we did not know what the Nazis were about to do. We know mm -hmm. now what the Chinese Communist Party is doing. So we are all the more responsible, and the IOC is mm -hmm. all the more responsible. And after, uh, after the, uh, the Olympics in Beijing, I am worried that they will invade Taiwan, like Hitler did after the 1936 case, it, it, it invaded Poland. They use they, Poland, these yeah. totalitarian regimes. They, they they use the Olympics as a way of legitimating themselves so that they can take their horrid, horrid totalitarian actions. Hmm. Steve, what do you uh, make of Costas's comments? And it, I, I keep hearing this argument: if we include China in the community of nations, we can help reshape them. It sounds like the old Bush doctrine with trade with China. You know, if we trade with them, they'll absorb our values. That doesn't seem to be working, Steve. No, it hasn't worked since it's been tried for four decades, and it, it right. obviously that dog doesn't hunt. I mean, at some point, we have to give up the notion that China is going to become like us, and we have to start fighting not to become like them, which is a topic for another day. But, you know, I have to tell you, Raymond, another reason not to go to Beijing, we really don't know what communicable disease is spreading in China these days. It, it does seem mm -hmm. unlikely to me that China's communist leaders would lock down entire cities because of Omicron, which is pronounced I'm a cold, which generally produces only mild symptoms. I mean, do we have some new variant of the COVID virus? There are rumors out of China of some new pathogen, a hemorrhagic fever, perhaps. The only thing we can be sure of is that Chinese officials will continue to mislead us about what's happening in China, just as they have from the beginning of the COVID pandemic. So why would we put our athletes at risk 
of contracting a new variant or worse yet of bringing it back to our shores by sending them to Beijing. People need to know that there's only one country that's really boycotting the Olympics, and that is North Korea. Believe it or not, China's only ally, which sits right there across the Yalu River from North China, where they have this new epidemic, has said, we're not sending our athletes to China because of this new pandemic. What do they know in Pyongyang that we don't know? Very good insight. That is, that is amazing, and I think you're right. Uh, Reggie, the IOC also kept silent about the Chinese government when they smothered an accusation of sexual assault by tennis player Peng Shui, uh, the three-time Olympian who practically disappeared from public view. Her story has sparked an international outcry. Now there are people wearing T-shirts at the Australian Open this week saying, where is Peng Shui? Why is the IOC silent on this story and unwilling to call out China's ongoing human rights abuses? You know, the only thing I can think of, Raymond, has to do with follow the money. You know, I mean, what are what are they going to mm -hmm. do? They are heavily invested in, in this at this point. And in contrast yeah. to the IOC, we have the WTA, the Women's Tennis Association, which has been absolutely heroic in the way that it has handled the situation concerning Peng Shui. They have they have said we don't believe that she's safe, even though you know the Chinese government has said that she's safe, and they have been willing to cancel events in in China, which is to their economic uh, detriment. So I wish mm -hmm. that more uh, more people, more more um, athletic associations would follow the lead of the WTA. They are truly heroic in this situation. Yeah, they, they, they should have moved these games. The IOC should definitely have moved these games, and the United States and these Western countries should have insisted on it, given the human rights uh, record there in China. And just geopolitical strategy. It's a stupid idea to give China this honor again. NBC, by the way, the media outlet covering the Olympics, announced this week much of its Beijing Olympics team would be covering the games from Stamford, Connecticut, due to COVID. But there's also the reality that the Chinese government censors the media. Steve, is it typical to discuss the politics of the host country, and do you expect we'll see it at these games? Well, it obviously is typical to discuss everything about the host country. The language, the culture, the setting of the Olympics is, is background, right? That's all B-roll material, and it comes up <laughs> frequently. Except in this case, we're not going to see anything about the carefully snow-covered outside the carefully snow-covered <laughs> slopes, the rest of the slopes, of course, being barren of snow altogether. And so it's right. all going to be contrived. It's all going to be a giant Potemkin village. And I'll tell you what, the, the Olympics is a celebration of the human spirit. It's about seeing uh, what individual athletes can, can, can be, the best that they can be in whatever it is, the giant slalom or whatever. But in this case, it's all stage-managed. And, and as for me, they can broadcast it until the cows come home. Uh, they can't force me to watch it, just like they can't force me to buy products made in China, just like they can't force me to stop talking about the persecution of Catholics in China and other religious minorities. I'm going to continue to speak up. Um, they can broadcast the games, but they can't make us watch them. Mm. If media is worried about COVID, uh, Reggie, and you raised this a minute ago, why are we sending our athletes there? I mean, do you expect to hear anything about China's human rights abuses during these games from NBC? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, you know, I, I, and also not from the athletes, not from any any media. So mm -hmm. we are going to have to rely on people like you and on people who are not in the legacy media to tell the truth about what's going on in Beijing, because everything there is incredibly um, enclosed. The, the athletes, the journalists, the staff, everybody's going to be in this bubble, and they're not going to be allowed to come outside of this bubble that's the yeah. Olympic bubble. And God forbid well, anybody who's inside of that bubble tries to say something about the human rights in China because they are in the power of the Chinese Communist Party, and who knows what will happen to them. And I have not seen any plan by the IOC or by the United no. States government of what they're going to do if somebody actually protests human rights in China. Well, there's a report published by the University of Toronto's Research and Strategic Policy Unit, Citizen Lab, it's called, and they found that the My 2022 app, which is mandatory for all the competing athletes in Beijing to use, has a flaw. The app is used to monitor athletes' health, their travel data, 
but an encryption flaw leaves files and media vulnerable to hacking. And it has a list of politically sensitive words that have been marked for censorship. Steve, the Chinese must be loving this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, my friend Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, uh, just put out that uh, Team USA is telling our athletes, uh, Raymond, to use burner phones and to avoid, right. sur avoid surveillance by the Chinese Communist Party. I don't know how you can avoid surveillance by the Chinese Communist Party when you're in China, because you'll be tailed and surveilled and watched. And you have to be careful what you say and where you go and who you talk to, not just because you might get arrested and get in trouble, but because you might get those people you have contact within China arrested as well. So that's what we've been having to do for the last 20 years in China. You, you don't take your iPhone. Uh, you don't take your, your, your phone to China. You get a burner phone. Uh, you use there and then throw away because they're watching, they're listening, they're surveilling everybody all the time in, in, in real time. So, you know, if you have to use a burner phone when visiting a country, why on earth are you visiting that country in the first place? Right. It's a great point. And then why are you giving them trillions, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars and supporting them to build venues and then broadcast this uh, event with fireworks and uh, beautiful lights to the rest of the world to make it seem like all is normal when they're the most regressive and, and oppressive regime on the planet? Reggie, you've been outspoken about the negative impacts of these vaccine passports. Recently writing in an op-ed, uh, that likened the vaccine passport to China's social credit system, which monitors citizens' medical, job, social history, and can reward or punish those citizens based on how they behave. I is this athlete's app merely an extension of that mindset, and should athletes be using it? Well, now, this is really interesting, uh, Raymond, because in China, they have a health pass that is related to the social credit score. It's all of the stuff is surveilled. And then they have this health pass. It can be either green, which means that you can move freely, yellow or red. And this is a way that they actually trap dissidents. All they have to do is move their health pass from green to yellow or red. And then the dissident is paralyzed. And God forbid mm. these health passes in the Olympic Village that they could move the health passes of people who might be top Olympic contenders to yellow or red, and all of a sudden, they are not able to compete. And of course, China takes wow. gold. I mean, that's one, one thought. Wow. Yeah, no, no, there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, both personal uh, information that, that is going to be seeded here. Health records, travel records, uh, the, uh, all the documentation, it's all on that app. Why you would submit that into the ether for China to poach, I don't understand. And you're right. Uh, unlike competition in the United States or another Western country, there is no guarantee this is going to be fair. Now, during his Wednesday audience, Steve, uh, Pope Francis this week had this to say ahead of Holocaust Remembrance Day. He said, it is necessary to remember the extermination of millions of Jews and people of different nationalities and religious faiths. This unspeakable cruelty must never be repeated. It must not be forgotten so that we can build a future where human dignity is no longer trampled underfoot. Now, sadly, Steve, the cruelty is being repeated. It's happening today in China. How is the Vatican still so silent about what's going on there? Uh, the Vatican has been silent about protecting and preserving freedom in Hong Kong. It has been silent about China's aggression towards Taiwan, where there are uh, a million Catholics living and lots and lots of Christians as well. It has been silent about the destruction of Catholic churches, Christian churches in China, and about the ongoing slow-rolling genocide of the Uyghurs. I mean, I don't think we can talk enough about what's happening to this Turkish-speaking people who have been on, mm -hmm. on that plot of land for thousands of years, where the husbands, the family, heads of household are being locked up by the millions, where the wives and small children have soldiers and policemen billeted with them, sleeping in the same beds, where we have the older children taken off, put in boarding schools, and only allowed to call home to their mommy for a half an hour once a month, and only taught in the Han Chinese language, not taught in their native language of Turkish. And then you have the young people sold in batches of 100 to factories on the coast of China, making goods for export. I mean, this is carefully calculated. We know that it comes from Xi Jinping himself, because we have a speech 
dating back from 2013, which he talks about homogenizing the Chinese population. And all minorities are being attacked, but none so viciously and, and none so genocidally, if I can use that word, as the Uyghurs in the far west. And, and I hope that the pope, who has tremendous moral authority, would speak out on this issue. Um, I mean, I know why the current occupant of the White House doesn't speak out. I mean, he's afraid to blame China, because he and his family are so compromised by Beijing. There have been so many sweetheart deals. So Biden doesn't want to talk about decoupling our economies. He doesn't want to demand reparations for those who've been killed by COVID. Uh, he is afraid to boycott the Olympics. Instead, they're, they're content in this White House to let China march relentlessly on with their genocide games, despite unleashing a devastating virus on the world. Um, I mean, but the Pope isn't subject to those kinds of restrictions, and, and I pray that he will speak out in the future. Reggie, I'll give you the last 30 seconds. Well, when we talk about the Olympic Games, I believe that not only should uh, we be boycotting them, I believe that in the future, and even in the present games, that they should be delayed and moved, even at this late date. Uh, and actually, that China should be banned from the Olympic Games. You know, the South Africa was banned for more than 20 years because of apartheid. Shouldn't China be banned because of genocide? Yes. Hmm. We will leave it there. For more on the work of Reggie Littlejohn, visit womensrightswithoutfrontiers.org. And Bully of Asia by Stephen Mosher is a must-read. It's available at bookstores everywhere and online. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.